Welcome back, everybody. This Week in America, website thisweekinamerica.us. The book Josie released from within is based on a true story about a young woman who had her whole life ahead of her. Family, security, popularity, beauty, and a bright future. But among the most vulnerable set of circumstances, she faced serious trauma caused by a set of events that would change her life forever. The book is an inspiring story covering three decades of her life, a success story with a message for those who struggle with mental illness and with great insight into a world when it crumbled around her. And the author of the book, the book is Josie Released from Within, the author, Josie Coughlin, with us on This Week in America. Josie, welcome to the program. It's great to have you with us. Hi, Rick. Thank you very much for having me. It is an inspirational book, and you're to be commended for telling your story, sharing the story so you can help other people. And let's go back and talk about the childhood, because people would start reading and they would go, this sounds like uh, an ideal childhood. Grew up with a loving family, what, eight kids involved in sports and music, as most young people are. Talk about those early days, the childhood. Yes, well, Rick, I was, I was born of one of eight, uh, uh, being the, the youngest girl, uh, number six. Um, I had, uh, do still have, um, loving, loving parents. Um, I was brought up in central Victoria in Australia and I was brought up in, a, in an environment on a farm where this, uh, I had security, um, a loving, loving family, plenty of brothers and sisters to play with, uh, interaction all the things that kids need to, to have that stable environment. So I was brought up feeling very carefree, happy, uh, nothing very negative, but you had you had trials that you had to deal with that everybody deals with, but it was a beautiful sort of way of, of experiencing life with a large family. And like most kids who grew up in a situation like that, you thought that serenity that you had, that security you had, would it really last forever? You didn't see life going in twists and turns, did you? You thought this is nice and you sort of thought this was going to be the way life was going to be for me. Yeah, that's right. I think when you, uh, when you have that environment, you don't think of anything else but what you're living. It's, it's when things uh, change that, um, I guess, introduce the negative um, feelings and vibes that we're not exposed to that, that can be confronting. And unless you... Uh, deal with things like that you, and you don't really know how to deal with things by putting uh, being put in a circumstance where you're not really um, used to that sort of environment or exposure then then things can change quite quickly. Josie Cocklin, our guest on This Week in America. Her book is called Josie Released from Within. The website is very simple, josiereleasedfromwithin.com. If you go to our website, thisweekinamerica.us, you can link on directly, get information on Josie and information on getting the book. And then your life changed. A cousin that you had never met comes into your life. Talk about that because that's when things really started to, to go out of control at that point, didn't they? They did. And I think in all um, in hindsight, which is a wonderful thing, it was something that um, no one intentionally uh, thought would put me in danger. Like my parents were, um, were are Catholic, so um, as all good Christian people like to do is to help someone who's less fortunate than ourselves. And at the time when my cousin was introduced to our family, the older brothers and sisters had moved on and made careers for themselves. So uh, this this cousin was a street kid. He was he didn't have the the attributes and and the the moral support that that I was lucky enough to have. So. Um, my parents thought by introducing him to our family, we could actually help. Um, it was just a circumstance that I was left alone with this this cousin. He was, you know, a few two three years older than I was at the time, and I was only fourteen. So it was something that he invaded my space. And I think at that age, when you're going through changes in your own makeup and you know puberty, all these sort of things, if someone uh, involves that area of where your comfort zone is that can create a lot of um, problems if you can't deal with it very very well and I didn't but not knowing at that time I, I kept that to myself for 20 years and it wasn't like I was um, I was violated in a way that was just a way of, of going beyond where I wanted that person to go it wasn't a serious violation but I felt very violated at the same time 
It's interesting. The, the book is called Josie Released from Within. When this happened, uh, an advance that you did not welcome. In fact, it, it happened, uh, the main incident happened while you were asleep. Your initial thought was, what could I have done differently? I should have, why did I sleep as long as I did? Maybe I could have prevented all of this. So there was sort of some, some what guilt right in the beginning, you thinking maybe I had something to do with this. Of course. I think that's when you're a young kid, you sort of close off. You, yes. you, and that's, that's sort of something that you, you do um, go within. It's something that you don't really know uh, the thoughts that go through your mind, you know, the guilt, should I say something, the threat of if I do say something, um, having, live, having to live with this uh, cousin for years after or a year or so after in the same environment. Um, it does cause a threat. So things like that, you you really do, um, unfortunately, go within and you feel trapped and you try and deal with things yourself. And that's something that I try to encourage to let people know not to do these days. And there's so many avenues for people to tap into now to know that that's something that you can talk about. Well, it's interesting. In the book, Josie Release from Within, Josie Coughlin, our guest on the program, and the website is josiereleasefromwithin.com. You talk throughout the book about how you got through it, advice for other people, and basically summing up in many of these circumstances, it's don't bottle up the pain. That's that's pretty much a message from the book, isn't it? That uh, don't keep it to yourself. Don't bottle up the pain. Oh, most definitely. Um, but it's easy for, for someone to say that if they haven't lived it or for someone like me, I was able to say that having lived it, um, years later, being able to see it from a different perspective. Um, so something like uh, that is, is something that I feel that I can offer to, to readers. Yes, so often you hear people talking and they've not gone through the situation. It's sort of a clinical expression of what you should do in this circumstance. And it really sounds good, except they really don't know what they're talking about. They're talking about it from a textbook rather than real life. The experiences we're talking about in the program today, the experiences that Josie went through, and it, the book is a success story. She She's doing fine, went through a number of different circumstances. And I want to talk about that that first nervous breakdown and, and leading up to that, with the last couple of years of high school, your family decides we're going to send you away to a school and you went to live with your sister and, and her husband. Talk about that experience because, again, that's one of those tipping points where things just didn't fit together like you had hoped that they were going to. That's right. I think at the time, um, like I said earlier, with my older brother and sisters leaving and making a career for themselves, I was uh, had a great opportunity and, and mum and dad thought they would have noticed the change in my behaviour from my, from my experience with my cousin, knowing that I was probably not giving the, the impression that I was happy. And they picked up on that and because they could afford to, they thought by giving me two more years of my high school, senior school, uh, sending me away to a, a all-girls college would give me the best of um, my opportunities in education. So all the intentions were good. My sister was happy to have me, but she was 10 years my senior. So putting my sister into a role where she was expected to be my mother and I was the younger uh, sister, it, it didn't gel. So. I think layer after layer, what happened was I was put into an environment where I wasn't well anyway from not dealing with the violation, then having to go to a, a school at year 11. So if anybody started school at that time in their life, that's something that causes a lot more adjustment in itself, um, having to make new friends and things like that. Um, I felt really confident about having a go, getting away from that environment. It was exciting to go to a city from a country environment. But I think it was all too much too soon and not really being at the age where I knew who I was inside enough to, to handle things. Yeah, on the surface, that sounds good. Here I am, boy, I can go off on my own. I've got my independence. I can uh, pretty much do what I want to do. Then you get there and you realize I am on my, I am all alone. It, it, it is a difficult feeling emotionally, isn't it, to try to deal with everything? Most definitely, and I think from what I, I, I think I was really happy in the, in the fact that I knew something 
was wrong. I had faith in myself to the point where I started to write and it started off just being like my own little diary and I would put that aside, I'd go to and back to it all the time and I would write things how I felt at the time and it was almost like having a friend instead of being on my own. So I was blessed in, the, in that way that I had that uh, release to be able to, to get my emotions out on paper. Going through all of this, and in the book you talk very openly about the first nervous breakdown, about being admitted to a psychiatric hospital, and, and, and relapses along the way, and you talk about the wrong medication. Let's talk a little bit about that, because that is so important. Talk about what you went through during that period, because you had the wrong medication, and how you finally bounced back from that. Yeah, it's it's quite a, a long story, but to, to condense it into... Um, a few minutes, I guess, would be basically saying that when I when I had the, the breakdown, when I got to the point where I, I needed to be uh, treated clinically and put into an institution, was uh, a place where I had to go to get to get well. To get the right medication, though, was a process that wasn't just for the doctors. It was something that I needed to have input into, because if you can read about it, you can read texts like we were saying before, but unless that person gives you uh, the reasoning why you're, you're there in that bad place, it's very hard for, for that uh, good result to come through. So the very first breakdown was something that my family uh, didn't know. I didn't really know what was going on. The doctors didn't know me. Uh, the environment was just crazy. So I ended up falling into a heap, being treated with um, things that they didn't really know would work. So from the initial uh, institution of knowing that I would get well, I always believed that I would, and I think that's what we all need to have is that will. So from there to getting onto the right medication, I was given medication that was, it could work for somebody else, but for me, what it did, it just sort of numbed my whole being and I functioned okay but I was sort of trapped within in a sense that I couldn't express how I felt, I put on double the size of weight, I my reactions were slower and every time I was reduced in medication what would happen was if anything traumatic or upsetting in my life would happen I would have a relapse because I would start sleeping, I would stop concentrating, I would cry, I would lose the jobs along the way. But what they would do, they would put me up onto that light, higher amount again. And then after a while, that would be decreased and then I would get unwell. So those episodes or relapses, as we might call them, were caused by not having the right medication to suit where I was in life. And I should be able to have a high and a low and be able to be sustained in that. And I, and I wasn't given that correct dosage. And when I realised that, it was only until I uh, found the right doctor who was be able to confide in me to get that right answer. And then she thought, OK, I know what this lady may need. And we worked at that, at that. And I was thankful because I was able to find the right level, the right medication, and in recovery 17 years now. You're listening to This Week in America. Our guest on the program is Josie Coglin. Her book is called Josie Released from Within. Her website is josiereleasedfromwithin.com. The book's available, of course, at uh, Amazon. You get information by going and linking directly to Josie's website by going to our website, thisweekinamerica.us. Time goes by too quickly in the program. You can read in the book, you went through the postnatal depression. Interesting to find out how actually common that is, but you got through that, back on the right track, through all of this, talk about the role of, of friends, faith, and prayers during all of this, because you, you closed in talking about good times ahead. You're able now to balance. I don't want to come back and talk about that word balance as well, but talk about faith and prayers and, and friends and how all of that worked to get you through these very difficult periods. Yes, my, my best friend that comes to mind is my husband, who I've been married to for 21 years and counting. We went to school together actually in 
in the country town of Dalesford in Victoria in, in, in high school. He was uh, in the same year, in the same room, classroom as I was, and uh, we were 12. So during that part, we were always friends, never romantically um, had a relationship until I was 19. But when I was 19, we were going through um, times where I had depression. So he is a friend that I would say got me through. He gave me direction. He, he loved me for who I was. So from 12 to where I am now, what I've really reminds me of, of recovery is that he says to me that I am the same person I am now as I was when I was 12, but I'm just more mature. And he was my rock. He, he gave me so much hope because he didn't give up on me. And I think friends don't give up on you. And the, the real friends stick by you through those the tough times. So also faith. Faith is something that I, I didn't lose along the way, but when I wasn't sure of who I was, I, I didn't pray as much or I didn't have the need, I didn't think. But when it comes down to the crunch of things, my faith got me through because of uh, my belief, um, my experiences, and and where I am today is is feeling like I can offer and give back to society what I may have suffered a lot to get to this point. But sometimes in life you have to get to that point to be able to to grow, and uh, I think faith does that to you. Well, and you're very honest in the book, Josie, released from within, that we all stumble and fall. It's how we react to that, and if you took all of the different circumstances that you had individually, that would be enough to knock a lot of people out of the game forever, where their lives would be altered and it would spiral downhill from there. You bounce back, and it's interesting you mentioned your husband loved you for who you were. And you talk about this in the book. How important is it for you to love yourself and to find out about the person inside? How important is that that, that you and people going through problems love themselves and understand really who they are? Yeah, I think it's a hard question because we all, it's hard to love yourself. It's hard to feel good about who you are if, if you do stumble and fall because every knock you, you do is how you, how you come back, is how you feel about things. But I think by being trapped and by having, um, being loved and being able to love is to, is to know yourself. And when you do know who you are and what, um, what you can contribute in life by, by having purpose, simple by having purpose is something that is crucial in every every person, then I can I can give something to that person. And if that person can receive what I've given them, then that's how love works, is, is a two-way thing. You mentioned balance, and that's so interesting, and it's a, a topic in the book, Josie, released from within. Josie Coughlin, our guest on the program. Her website is josiereleasedfromwithin.com. A couple minutes left in the program. How important that balance is that you don't get overly excited and caught up in the highs because you know they're not going to last forever, and you, you're able to deal with the, with the lows and, and pull yourself up and, and go forward. How important was keeping that balance in your life and getting to the point where in, in your last chapter, it, it, it's good times ahead. Things are going well. Yeah, I think the, I think the balance and good times ahead is, is firstly knowing yourself, knowing your limitations, being in an environment that, that you're happy in. Um, I've got a beautiful son. He's uh, 17. I've got a beautiful husband. Um, you know, I, I don't expect to get along with everybody in life. I've got family members that I do and others that aren't so close. But I think in life, if you just believe in what you do and just do the best that you can, and understand that um, by having a balance is good and bad, but at the same time, um, having a positive approach is is the key. With with faith in my in my situation, I think I need medication um, because of everything that I've gone through. But getting the right medication is given me um, a very good quality of life. So I can't be um, anything but thankful for that because I wouldn't be here today without it. So thank you very much. How rewarding is it when you hear people that have read the book Josie released from within that get the inspiration that maybe it's the final straw for them? It's hearing from somebody who's been through it 
that gives them the encouragement that they need to dig deep within and realize there is a light at the end of the tunnel. How does that feel to be able to offer that lifeline in some cases to people? It's amazing. Uh, to be honest, I, I wrote the book as a, um, initially for my own therapy, but then it was for my son for a legacy uh, type of offer. And I ended up getting into a um, non-for-profit organisation in Australia called Beyond Blue, where I talk about my life, and which is the book. And what I get from people listening um, to my story is absolutely inspirational and it's good for me to hear that I do resonate with all levels and a conversation about anxiety, depression, um, anything that, that is um, releasing that stigma in society is a wonderful thing. So it, it makes me feel like I'm doing something that I'm meant to do. Well, and that certainly is the case. It's a very inspirational book, Josie, released from within. Our guest on the program has been Josie Conklin. The website is josiereleasedfromwithin.com. You can go to our website, uh, thisweekinamerica.us, and be able to link on directly to Josie's website. Uh, the last name spelling, by the way, if you're looking that up, is C-O-G-H-L-A-N. And again, all the information available at our website, thisweekinamerica.us. Josie, thank you so much for being on the program. Thank you for writing the book. I'm sure it's helpful to, uh, to a number of people worldwide. And thank you for being with us on the program today to, to share the, the success story. Well, it's my pleasure, Rick. Thank you for having me. It is our pleasure. You're listening to This Week in America, our website, thisweekinamerica.us.